Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So I know it looks different than what you guys normally see in my videos. As you can see, I'm sitting on my bed um, where I normally sit at my table where I do my makeup. But the light is kind of funky right now and my ring light, the glare, you can see off of my glasses. So I didn't want to turn the ring light on. But I wanted to come and just do a quick video on a request that I had got down in my comment section. I can't remember the name of the person that requested to do I me mean, do this video. It's kind of suck. She requested me to do a video giving you guys like not really my tech school experience, but to kind of share with you guys what to expect during tech school. So y'all already know I don't write nothing down. I have never written down. I'm just gonna kind of give it to y'all. You know, like I say, off the dome. So pretty much when you get to tech school, you do have like a little bit more freedom or whatever the case is. But at the end of the day, you're there to complete tech school and move on to the operational air force. It's pretty much like a midway point between basic training and operational air force. So you're there to pretty much go through tech school and graduate. Yeah, you get all the fun stuff, whatever, whatever, which I'll get to another video. But you're there to learn your job, test, um, graduate tech school, and move on. So, all tech school experiences won't be the same. The length of your tech school won't be the same as other people. Where you go to tech school won't be the same as other people because it depends on what your job is as to where you go. Um, or how long you'll actually be there. So, I'm a command post controller, so I'll be pretty much referring to my job. With being command post controller, um, I believe I had six or seven tests during tech school. My job, um, our tech school is really short because there's a lot of stuff that they can't really teach us in tech school. It's pretty much like OJT on the job training. So, I only had like, you know, pretty much a, sh a short amount of time where I was actually like there at tech school taking test of somebody like actually teaching me you know something pretty much out of a book and me actually testing on it and they call them blocks so you'll go through one block different jobs have different amounts of blocks and you'll move like you know into your first block your instructor will teach you whatever is in that block and then you'll test on it you'll move on to the next block how long you're on a block might depend on how much information is in that block. All of your blocks won't match up with how long you're on them. Some of them you might only be on that block for a couple of days. Some of them you might be on that block for a whole week, maybe a week and a half, whatever. So, like I said, with my job, I think we'll have like maybe six or seven blocks or chapters where they, our instructor will actually teach us the material and we would test on it. So we would go to class every day. You do have class Monday through Friday. And we were in class, I believe, from like 7.30, 7 o'clock. We were in class from 7 o'clock until 4. Or like by 3.30, we were getting released. 3.30, 3.40, we were getting released. And we will walk back downstairs and march back to the squadron with everybody else. March back to the dormitories is what I mean. So you will have like a schoolhouse that you'll go to every day, Monday through Friday. Sit in class, just like as if you was in college, and they teach you how to do your job. You're not really doing the hands-on portion unless you have what they call a simulator. So being command post, we had, as we got further on and we knew um, pretty much the book stuff about our job, we would go down into a simulator and they would judge us based off of our performance down in the simulator. And the simulator is pretty much set up just like a command post would be. So I would have to do the same stuff down in the simulator that I technically do day to day on my on my job when I get up and I go to work every day. So um we would start a block and then they will you know pretty much go through the slides. So you have slideshow, you know you can highlight in the in the book, whatever, and the little paper that they give you pamphlet, you can highlight in it. And then every day we will have what they call appraisals, which are like quizzes, where they test you on the material that they taught you the day prior. So, test school does move really, really fast. 
um and you have to you know be on top of it and like i say it's okay to do extra you know activities or whatever like shop go out to eat hang out whatever but you really 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 have to study because everything one day builds on top of the past day and then the next day will build on the day before that so you want to stay on top of your studies you know make sure you're studying material because like i say at least like every other day you're gonna have an appraisal my class we had one every day if we weren't taking a test we were taking an appraisal and then once we got done with that whole chapter we would pretty much do like a review different instructors do stuff differently um but we would do a review and then we would have our test and as soon as we got done with that test that morning we might might have went to lunch and we come back from lunch we rolling right into the next block so like i said tech school moves very very quickly um but if you stay on top of it it's really it's really not that hard for me, um, I've never really had like an issue with studying or with school or whatever, so it's pretty easy for me. If you know that you're not really good at studying, you have good study habits, or you're not really a good test taker, like you need to focus extra time because if you get below, I believe if you get below a 70, you fail that test and you will get washed back and what that means is like if there's a class that's coming after you or like two classes after you they can wash you back into that class so just like in basic training like you can get in trouble in basic training and they'll move you back so whereas you should have graduated already now you've been moved to someone to a flight behind you tech school works the same way and you can get washed back into that class that's on that subject that you um failed or whatever while the net while your class that you were initially in continues to move forward and you don't want to do that like like i said the goal with tech school is to get in and get out you don't want to be there forever so just keep that in mind like you don't want to be known as a person that then got washed back or you didn't been there you got there two weeks ahead of somebody that you know they got the same job as you but they started you know their class started two weeks after you and now you sitting in their class while your class then graduated and gone like you don't want to do that um, another thing is, I know at Keesler, I don't know if all tech schools are like this, but at Keesler, if you got below an 80 on your test, they put you in, I forgot what the name of it is, but pretty much you had to go to class an hour early. So if you got like a 78, you know, 79 or between the 70 and the 79, you had to go to class an hour early so that you could get that extra study time in with your instructor. You don't want to do that either because... If you're a prior student or like you're already operational Air Force and you're cross training into a job, you you pretty much, you know, whatever. But if you are fairly new from basic training, like, man, tech school, they make you get up early in the morning if you're there during the um summer summer months you get up early like i was you get up early in the morning and you do pt in the morning like you don't want to be the, that person like you want to have like the time to do pt and when you're done with pt like time to eat your breakfast and get your life together before you got to go to class you don't want to be that person that got to go into class an hour early like don't because if sia that's what it's called i don't know what it stands for but it's called sia it just came to me but it's called sia like everybody gonna know you at sia because you going to class an hour early like don't be that person um you know to keep in mind that if your job requires you to handle certain material you won't be able to take that material back to your dormitory and study for it so that's what i'm saying like tech school is it's pretty serious business like so you know take it seriously because eventually like if you wash out of a like if you wa get washed back and then, like, they're not just going to keep washing you back into a class. Eventually, they're going to be like, okay, this person's not getting it. And then they will try to find another job to, like, move you into. But if that's not a possibility and you're just not applying yourself, you get in trouble, um, you know, now you're not passing your, your test, you can get sent home. Like, the military is not, like, they're not about to play with you. Them people at your tech school is not about to play with you. So, if you can't apply yourself and do what you need to do, get in and get out, you're risking, you know, you not being able to 
move forward or even become a part of the operational air force and you don't want to be the left your family went to basic training went through all of this hell just to get put out of military and tech school because you couldn't apply yourself now if you are a good student you haven't really gotten in no trouble since you've been there um no military training leaders have had to you know address the situation with you or you haven't got have to go see anybody and you just struggling um academically then they try to work with you. But if you already be in a shitty airman, them people is not about to work with you. They will be like, deuces. Like, give you that paperwork, get everything signed, and send your ass back home. You know, excuse my language. But they will send you back home. So, just be mindful of that. Um, like I say, tech school is it's, it's pretty tough. But if you apply yourself, you can definitely get it through it. Just be mindful of, you know, the jobs that you pick. Because if you don't want to be in tech school forever, don't pick no job. They got a long-ass tech school. Um, if you, you know what I'm saying, don't want like me. When I went to Kisler, I'm from Florida. So I was only six hours away from my hometown. So my family was able to come and visit me. That was another thing that I really liked about being at Kisler. So keep that in mind, too, when you pick a job. I'm not saying, you know, just pick a job that's close to home because then you can get stationed all the way across the world and be away from home. But I'm just saying keep that in mind. If you have, like, a spouse or you have children, if you pick a job and, oh, ooh, the tech school is close to your home or it's not that far, people can visit you in tech school. Um, So I think that's about it. As far as like academic stuff with tech school, they provide you everything that you need. You will already have a book bag from basic training. Um, people just just keep little notepads and keep their notes or whatever. As long as you got a pen, piece of paper, you pretty much good. There's nothing else that you really need. Besides that, uh, yeah, you do got to be in uniform when you go to class or during the duty day period. You got to be in uniform. Just be respectful just because, you know, you've graduated basic training or you're not in the dorms. I mean, you have to, you don't have to be respectful because your instructor will tell on you if you're being disrespectful or they will give you paperwork. Like, hey, they will give you like a written warning um, and then they will discipline you if need be between them, the commander, your military training leaders. So just be mindful of that as well. Just because you grown, don't mean you just go up in there and talk to them people however you want to talk to them because it's not going to fly. And you got to know that most of the instructors that are teaching a class actually come from that career field. So they know a lot about the career field. Use that to your advantage. If you have questions about different bases, nine times out of ten, they either know somebody that they been to the base or they didn't been to the base, so you can ask those questions. Just, you know, anything that you could possibly think of, you know, ask your instructor, you know, talk to them because they're trying to get you up out of their classroom and onto your duty station, and they want to help you out as much as possible. If you know that, like, you, you know, need, like, a home or whatever, like, they can kind of guide you to – the steps that you need to take to be able to make sure you're set up for when you go to your next base. And then you also find out, like, your duty station while you're in tech school. And then your instructor will be the one nine times out of ten to let you know who your sponsor will be. And your sponsor is the person that will give you all the information and just help you out. Your sponsor is already at your duty station. And they're the person that you, you know, talk to about whatever to make sure that you're set up when you get there or somebody pick you up from the airport or somebody just you know show you around or just be friend so that you actually know somebody and feel comfortable communicating with somebody when you get to your base so i kind of hope i hit everything if not then y'all know what to do just leave a question down in the comment section and i'll either address it there or i'll make another video so i hope you guys enjoy and as usual i will talk to you guys later love you bye